I'll make some preliminary remarks, which are necessarily a little bit long, given the topic, and then we're happy to take some questions. As you know, ASADA commenced an investigation into the alleged use of prohibited substances by players at NRL clubs in February of this year. ASADA's focus has always been on, and continues to be on, doping allegations against players and support personnel. Whilst at this stage ASADA has not given us information warranting any further infraction notices, that investigation remains ongoing. The NRL commenced its own investigation into whether the supplement program in place at the Cronulla Sharks in 2011 contravened the NRL code of conduct or other aspects of the NRL rules. We commenced this investigation at a time when player interviews with ASADA had concluded and when we were advised that our investigation would not prejudice the ASADA investigation. The information we uncovered raised serious questions. And following a rigorous assessment, I have formed the provisional view that the club has breached the NRL code of conduct through a serious failure to safeguard the health and welfare of its players. These failures have potentially put the well-being of players at risk and also expose them to possible violations under our anti-doping code. The provisional findings suggest, amongst other things, that no adequate supervision or controls were in place at the club at the relevant time, and that a number of players were injected with substances, the precise nature of which, to this day, remain unknown by people without proper medical qualifications to do so. Accordingly, I have today issued a breach notice against the club, which includes the proposed penalty of $1 million. With $400,000 suspended, subject to the satisfaction of a number of conditions related to governance. I have also formed the provisional view that action should be taken with respect to the registrations of the head coach, Mr. Shane Flanagan, and the then head of strength and conditioning, Mr. Trent Elkin. In the case of the head coach, the provisional findings are to the effect that he failed to ensure a safe working environment and failed to take appropriate steps when he became aware that unsafe practices had been adopted. To the point, if the provisional findings are correct, these practices potentially put at risk the health and well-being of players. It is therefore proposed that the head coach's registration be suspended for a period of 12 months. It is also proposed that this suspension may be shortened to nine months if he successfully completes further training and demonstrates a proper awareness of his obligations as head coach. In relation to Mr. Elkin, the provisional findings include that he failed to ensure changes to the club's supplement program were approved by the club doctor that he injected players without the proper, to qual proper qualifications or training to do so, and that he misrepresented material facts in relation to the supplement program. It is therefore proposed that his registration be cancelled. If that is the decision I finally make, he will be free to apply for registration again at some point in the future. However, it would be fair to say that it is unlikely any such application 
would receive favourable consideration if it is brought at any time within the next two years. In saying that, any future application, whenever made, will be properly considered on its merits. I must stress to you all and to the people watching that these are provisional findings against the club and the individuals. All parties have the right to state their case and to give their response before a final determination is made. But also let me be really clear. If the provisional findings prove to be justified, we would regard such conduct as entirely contrary to the game's rules and the game's values. We will not accept practices that put our players at risk. I want to assure the fans and members of the Cronulla Sharks that we will ensure your club does the right thing by your players. The new board and management team, led by Damien Keogh, are already making effective changes to build a stronger governance framework and therefore a stronger club. We will continue to support them through that process. Thank you, and I'm happy to take your questions. Um, Mr. Steve, what um, substances are you concerned could have breached the SIO code? Uh, look, I, th I think this is an issue of fundamentally of, of player welfare and health and well-being. Um, the fact, as I've just read in my statement, is uh, we're not clear to this day what substances uh, were injected. Uh, this is more about, provisionally, our findings suggest that uh, we've had individuals in injecting or giving substances and we don't know what they are. Uh, I think that cuts fundamentally to, to player welfare. Is there scope now for the league to take action against some of the players, potentially? Look, the provisional findings that we have um, suggest that this is, a, this is about people with a duty of care to our athletes and this is about good governance within a club uh, and this is about making sure that we're always putting the welfare of ath athletes first, first and foremost. And you know, that's, that's the extent of the, the investigation that's been underway. Separately, as I've said, there is the ASADA investigation continues and, and that will continue until uh, ASADA are, are, are comfortable they reach a conclusion or they continue to investigate. You said Joe Delphine misrepresented the facts during the investigation. Did he lie to the investigating officers? Um, Look, I'm not going to go into the specifics of uh, the, the provisional findings. What will happen now is everybody has the right of reply and we'll be very clear with the individuals involved uh, as to what the findings are. We will work with them to, uh, we're going to give a date of the 15th of January. So typically under the rules it would be five days. We're going to extend that to the 15th of January such that submissions can be made and um, We'll take all of those, uh, those, those submissions into consideration and then, a f and then I will make a final decision. I will not make a final determination until we have all of the information. And I think it's only fair and appropriate and reasonable that uh, the people involved are, g are given the opportunity to, to make those submissions. Uh, and as Dave, as Dave said, just to highlight to that fact, as Dave said, obviously, this has been a very thorough process that we've gone through. We really deliberated on all the mitigating and aggregating factors and a key part of this is it is provisional uh, and it's really important for us to allow obviously the club and the individuals uh, to have time to provide them their feedback to allow us to therefore make that final solution. Dave, when and how did you inform Cronulla and Parramatta? Um, as Jim said, it's been a very, very uh, uh, thorough process, Josh. I think we've, you know, we've worked through this over, over a number of months and uh, the, it's, it's had depth and breadth to the information that's been gathered. Um, I, I spoke to uh, Cronulla this morning uh, and I, I spoke to, to Shane and uh, Jim spoke to Trent. So the, the deliberation has been uh, careful um, and uh, very considered and we wanted to make sure that that's the case. These are provisional findings at the end of the day. Everybody has the right to consider what, what, what we're saying and put, and put their case forward. Uh, and, and we'll take it to that next stage. But, but, but the guys were formed this morning, informed this morning. How did Shane accept the uh, look, I, what I said to Shane is exactly uh, the information that, that I've given here, and um, you know, clearly that's that, that's a difficult situation. And I also made the point to Shane that uh, this is a provisional set of findings. Uh, I, I encouraged him to put his submission forward. Uh, I also said that we would make sure that any support we can give him and his family through what is a difficult time 
uh, then we we would be right there right there with him. But but, but quite clearly, it's a very it's a very difficult set of circumstances that. Um, uh, it's provisional, but it cuts to the heart of accountability. And, and frankly, if the provisional findings are upheld, uh, I think as you've, you've gotten a tone through uh, my initial comments, player welfare, well-being, all of that risk is front and centre of any of the considerations that we make. If he is suspended, will he be paid for that period of time? Um, under the NRL rules, from the point that the notice is issued, uh, he's suspended. So from effectively in effect now, uh, he, he is suspended. His employment contract is with his club, so that, that would be a matter for discussion with his club. What does it mean for the, the other support staff that was put down by the club? The provisional findings indicate that there are no other cases to, to be answered. So what I've told you is where we've got, gotten to within this investigation. The next stage is that, the, that, that people get the right of reply, and I think that's a really important stage. Uh, 15th of January, we would receive a submission or not. At that point in time, I'll take the submission into consideration, and shortly thereafter, I would, I would arrive at a final determination. Um, following the final determination, if any party is not comfortable with where we've arrived through a fair and thorough process, uh, there is the right of appeal.